You want to learn Mandarin? Great, but you should know how, at least which tools you have to use. In this video, I'm going to show you my top 8 tools that I use for translation in Mandarin. When people were studying a language back in the days, they were using dictionaries. Remember? Those were those huge books with hundreds of pages, thousands of words, and it was so hard to just find the word you wanted to look for. So translating can be long and inefficient. But also nowadays, it can be quite hard to pick the right translation software in the right situation. So the goal of this video is to erase all that inefficiency in your language learning process. Because translating is never just translating. For instance, you might just want to translate a word, you might want to translate a sentence or an entire book, website or text. Also it makes a difference if the word is a commonly used word, if it's maybe like a kind of preposition or if it is a technical term. And finally it also matters about your intention when translating. Do you just want to know the meaning in your own language or do you actually want to deeply understand the word's usage and origin? So for all those use cases in Mandarin I got something prepared for you. Let's go jump right in. Alright, let's take a look at Pleco first. Pleco is one of the most basic and most important softwares you use when studying Mandarin. It is the biggest database out there with English Chinese translations in the entire World Wide Web. So this app really helps you to translate the word into Chinese or the other way around. It helps you to understand the origin of the word. You can even see the stroke order. You can see the radicals of which the character consists, which can be very helpful to understanding and memorizing the word. Also, Pleco has thousands of example sentences to better help you understand the context in which the word can be used. But it also offers a variety of ways to search for a certain character. For example, you can type in the character, you can draw the character on your phone, you can take a photo or just enter it with audio. But it also has some downsides because it is only a smartphone app or a tablet app, but you cannot access it from your computer or from the internet. Also, it's just a dictionary, so that means it cannot translate entire texts. Pleco for me is the most important app I use every day, so all the other softwares I mention later are less important than Pleco, because this for me is really the basics of studying Chinese in 2023. Line Dictionary is another very important tool for me when studying Mandarin. For all of you guys who have traveled to Japan or Taiwan, you might know the company line already. For example, Japanese and Taiwanese people use it instead of WhatsApp, but the company also offers a variety of other services. Among them is the Chinese English Dictionary. This dictionary is very good and offers a lot of functions like Pleco. For example, it shows you the translation, the stroke order and also example sentences, but it also offers additional features. For example, you can see the HSK level for each and every word you learn. This might be very helpful, especially when you prepare for an exam, because you want to know if this word is relevant for you. I always think it's very helpful to check out the example sentences online because they are not the same as in Pleco. Also, you can hover over them with a mouse and always see all of those words and their meaning and if you don't understand it, just click on it and go to the other word and you can learn in a steady process. It's very convenient because you can download the app on your phone but also access a website online which makes it a very accessible translation tool. On the downsides, however, I can say that some of the example sentences are either wrong, badly translated or just very confusing so you cannot always take everything which is written down in line for granted. Also, since it's just a dictionary, you can only search for terms or short sentences, but not for entire texts. All right, Google Translator, I mean, that's a really low hanging fruit tool, right? I mean, everybody knows Google Translator, everybody has used it before, but it comes along with some benefits other tools cannot keep up with. First of all, I'm just saying Google Translator is really convenient to use. It's a really quick fix tool, so you can always just copy and paste something inside and out, and you have an idea at least of what it means. Google Translate might not always have the most accurate translation, but it's really good to use in some use cases. For example, I was studying international management in Chinese. So I was not just studying the language, but actually tried to learn using Chinese. So sometimes when the professor put up a slide and I could not just easily understand what was on there, because at some point the Mandarin wasn't that good, I just used to copy the content and paste it into Google so I have a kind of quick idea of what the content is. Obviously, that's not good if you want to study Mandarin really efficiently, but if you're under time pressure, Google Translate is going to help you out. So for me, those are a few use cases. First of all, what I just mentioned, the time pressure. Second of all, is when you read the sentence, you know the words in it, you understand the words in it, but you still don't get the meaning of the entire sentence. Then I think it's really good to use Google Translate as well. And third of all, if you don't know how to phrase something in Chinese, so you can just enter the English word, the English sentence 
sentence and then check out where Google recommends you. Of course, I know there are a lot of alternatives to Google Translator. I mean, I just like point out DeepL here. DeepL has also very good Chinese translations, but for this video, I just chose Google Translator. Obviously, you can use whatever fits you the best. Google also offers some more benefits because you can translate entire documents like PowerPoints, PDFs, and Word documents, which can be very helpful as well. Also, when you get the app and you don't really speak Chinese and you're in a Chinese speaking country, you can just use it and you can do the thing with the augmented reality where you can actually see the characters being translated in real time. It's also very, very helpful with the Google Translator app. Finally, I want to mention some of the downsides. As I mentioned, it's not too accurate always. Also, you don't have alternatives to words and to translate. For example, if you just translate one word, I'm just going to show you one translation, although there might be six. And finally, Google Translate can make you lazy to learn. So if there's any character or any paragraph or, or some sentence you don't understand, you might just tend to copy paste it into Google Translate. And that's actually not a good habit if you actually want to learn Chinese Mandarin fast. Because when you always use Google, when you don't understand something, you're never going to understand more than you know already. So just keep that in mind whenever using this tool. It's very efficient, but also kind of dangerous if you actually want to study fast. Next on our list is Baidu Fun.ee. I'm surprised that many people have not heard about that software so far, but it's actually the biggest translation software people use in China. You guys probably know Baidu, Tencent, and Alibaba, which are the biggest three tech companies in China. So Baidu is actually pretty good when it comes to all the data you need to have a really, really good translation in your software. So I say whenever you want to translate a really long text, a book, a website, whatever, and use translation software, I would recommend to use Baidu because it has the highest accuracy and it writes the best Chinese. Also, it has some features like Grammarly, so you can choose the style the Chinese is supposed to be in. So you got the general translation, you got the more technical Chinese, you even got biomedicine and some web styles. So you can adapt that also, which might be very interesting for you. The next one is Chinese Grammar Wiki. This one is not like a traditional translation software, but more like a grammar dictionary, which you can access online. I find it very helpful because whenever I don't understand a grammar concept, I can just look for it on this website. So you can filter for HSK levels, but you can also just use a search bar, which is actually pretty well designed. So let's just say you don't understand how the bar grammar works. So whenever you see the words, you don't know what it means or what kind of syntax you should use. So you just go on the website and check it out. And you have a really good explanation on this website. You got lots of examples that tell you which way you should do it and which way is wrong. You got color coded words. So this is really well, especially for beginners to understand the root structure of Chinese sentences. All right, our next tool is not a website or an app, it's actually a Chrome extension. I feel like not many people know this extension, but for me it's super, super helpful because there's literally no faster way to translate into Chinese. Just take the mouse and hover over a Chinese character and you can see the translation in real time, which is super conveniently when reading texts. So if you want to know more, just press G and it's going to lead you directly to the Chinese Grammar Wiki page, which I was just introducing. This is super helpful if you want to read Chinese news, any websites or just lyrics. So you can just hover over it if you don't know a word and you're going to understand the meaning of it. However, it also has some downsides. One of them, it does not work always because there might be some websites where they just block this function. And just as Google Translate, you shouldn't use it too often or it will torpedate your efforts to learn Chinese. If you hover over a word anytime you don't know it, you're never gonna actually make the extra mile and try to read it or try to understand what it means in your head before you see the translation. So you should actually think first and then translate it. Otherwise, you might just not make any progress. Anyway, you can always toggle it off in the top right corner of your browser. For me, it's really just a nice to have, but I think for some people of you, it might be very, very helpful. All right, our last tool in the list is Wikipedia. So you might think why you should use Wikipedia as a translation software, because it's actually a website which provides a lot of knowledge about kind of everything. Well, actually, Wikipedia is very, very helpful if you don't know what's the exact translation for a more special word. So whenever I was in university and I had to translate, for example, technical terms, cities, countries, names, companies, all of those things, I always just use Wikipedia because I could be certain that the Wikipedia article probably uses the right word for what I'm trying to translate. So what I'm basically doing is you enter the page in English or your own language. And after finding the word you're looking for, you can just translate it into Chinese. So let's just say I'm looking for the Venice Film Festival and I'm writing an essay about the Venice Film Festival Awards. 
So you're just gonna go to the Wikipedia page, see on the English article of Venice Film Festivals where's the section which lists the awards, so you can see them, and you translate to Chinese, and now you have the official names which all of these awards have in Chinese. So you might think I could just like put them in Google Translate, but let's just take for example the Golden Lion. So this one is called Jin Shijiang, but you don't know that it's called Jin Shijiang because it could technically also be Jin Shi or Jin Shijiang because this is just Chinese. You don't know which characters you use, but apparently the official name is Jin Shijiang. So you know right now for sure. All right. So this is the secret formula of translating Mandarin in the most efficient way. Let's be honest, we all know how fast the motivation can fade away if you try to identify the word in front of you, but you just can't find the correct meaning. Especially Chinese is a language where you need a lot of resilience, perseverance, optimism towards the future and confidence that you're actually gonna master the language in the end. So it's a lot about the attitude and if you're not learning in an efficient way, this can really distract your motivation. If you guys have any other translation tools or tricks you wanna share, please let me know in the comments. Also, another really important Chinese tool for me is Anki, but since it's not a translation software, I did not include it in this list. But for everybody who's interested in Anki flashcard, I made an entire video about this as well. You can find it here. All right, so right now you guys are well equipped. If you find the video useful, please smash the like button. So, jiao nuli dushu. See you guys next time.